and welcome to a brief video cast on the life cycle of a particular type of fungus called Sardaria primicola. Sardaria primicola is not unlike any other type of fungus in that it goes through a life cycle known as an alternation of generation. We're also looking at Sardaria primicola because it demonstrates an important activity that takes place during meiosis and that's called crossing over. The life cycle of a fungus and some protists, which is the kingdom of single-celled organisms, goes through what's known as an alternation of generation. In animals, the multicellular phase of the organism is diploid. That is, animals have the full set of homologous chromosomes. In fungi, the multicellular form is haploid. That is, it has only one half a set of homologous chromosomes. So these haploid cells do go through mitosis to produce a multicellular organism. When two one-end cells from different strains of fungi get together, they can perform fertilization as they fuse together. That fertilization produces a two-end zygote. This diploid zygote remains as a single-celled organism. That two-end zygote is the product of sexual reproduction and now has a new combination of chromosomes and genes. Meiosis occurs to this 2-1 cell, and the generation is restored to the haploid state. Here is a crude drawing of the life cycle of, uh, particular to Sardaria primicola. We'll start down here. This would appear to be a fuzzy growth on perhaps in a petri dish. It's the haploid version of the multicellular organism Sardaria primicola. If we zoom in, what we would actually see are multiple cells of these filaments called mycelia. Again, they're haploid. However, another strain of Sardaria primicola with a different combination of genes, also haploid, can meet up with another strain and two cells from each population can fuse, forming fertilization. That new cell is now diploid and is called a zygote. That diploid cell goes through meiosis to produce haploid cells, and then those haploid cells go through mitosis to produce up to eight individual cells called ascospores. These ascospores, once matured, can be released back into the environment. The actual structure looks more like this. This is the multicellular haploid organism here with many of these asci, which are tubes that have the ascospores inside. As it matures, the ascospores are re-released into the environment, and when these ascospores land on a nutrient source or a food source, they will go through mitosis again. Again, they are now in the haploid state, going through mitosis, creating the multicellular organism with all the fuzzy outgrowths, which are actually these filaments called mycelium. Now, if you've watched the video on meiosis, you've observed the process of crossing over between homologous chromosomes. This happens when the diploid zygote of a fungus goes through meiosis. We can see the results of that in Sardaria because there are two different strains of Sardaria that exist. One's called a wild type, and another is, is, is a mutant strain of Sardaria. The wild type, represented with a plus sign, have black ascospores, and the mutant strain has tan ascospores. When the mycelia of these two different strains come together and undergo meiosis, the asci containers of the ascospores develop four black ascospores and four tan ascospores. Now the arrangement of the spores directly reflects whether or not crossing over has occurred. Here's how it works. Starting over here, these chromosomes here have the mutant form for the tan ascospores and these chromosomes are from the wild type which will produce the black ascospores. This is the 2N zygote, the haploid zygote. Now, when the zygote prepares for meiosis, of 
course, the chromosomes can separate independently of one another. It's going to go through meiosis 1 and then meiosis 2. Meiosis 2 produces four haploid cells. Two of them contain the mutant form for the tan ascospores, and two contain the wild type for the black ascospores. Each one of those ascospores goes through one division of mitosis to produce a total of eight ascospores. The asci, or the container that contains those ascospores, will have the tan and the black ascospores arranged in this pattern. The tan will be, the four tan will be separated from the four black ascospores. With the tan on top and the black on the bottom, or in this alternate form here. This would represent an event where crossing over did not occur. Now, crossing over doesn't always occur. Now if crossing over does occur, the zygote goes through meiosis, and in prophase one of meiosis, a segment of the wild type chromosome is exchanged for the mutant form. The cell finishes meiosis two. Each one of those goes through mitosis. So now we have variations here. This will produce an ascospore that's tan, this one tan, and this cell here will produce a, a black ascospore and a black ascospore. When the ASCII show this alternating light and dark, light and dark arrangement of ascospores, we know that crossing over has occurred. So in our lab, we're going to have, have had two strains of the Sardoria, the wild type and the tan mutant, grown in a petri dish. And crossing over may or may not occur. We'll be able to tell this by looking at the ASCII. This is what the petri dish would look like, covered with the mycelia and the fruiting bodies of the Sardaria fungus. The fruiting bodies are the black parts, and that's where the ASCII and the ascospores are being produced. It's called the fruiting body because this is sort of the fruit of the fungus. This is an actual picture of that fruiting body releasing the ascospores into the environment. These ascospores find a nutrient source and begin dividing. As they divide, they, they produce these mycelia. These are multicellular filaments which you often see as a fuzzy growth when fungus is growing on a food source. And you know when to throw it out. Now if two strains come together, perhaps this is one strain here, and this is the mycelium from another strain, they can fuse together in a process of sexual reproduction to produce a 2N cell. Again, here is the, the haploid fruiting body with all of the ascospores and the inside their ASCII being ejected here. As you can see, most of these are of the wild type. But every once in a while you can get a great view of an arrangement like this. These rows here represent individual ASCII. And you can see that there are eight in most of them if they're intact. Here's an ASCII that shows four wild type and four mutant tan type. So in this representation, crossing over did not occur. However, if I go over to this ASCII here, I can see that the ascospores show the two tan, two dark, two tan, two dark alternation. And I know that the cells that went through meiosis in this case did have some crossing over of the genes for the color of the ASCII. Your meiosis lab will have you looking at images of these ascospores and tabulating the frequency of the crossing over event that occurred between the Sardaria permacola. So hopefully this little introduction prepares you better for that lab and gives you a, a more intimate idea as to what's happening when fungi go through their life cycle. Crossing over occurs in these primitive life forms. This leads us to believe that crossing over is quite an old event in life's history. I hope that's helpful. Now go to that lab and try to figure it out. Until then, see you back in class.